Hey, howdy everybody. What's up? How's it going? Welcome back to episode three of CoreyCast. Not going to say anything about the name. You know how I feel about it. It's fine. Today I'm going to talk about all the music that I've heard since the last episode, which was on July 20th. I was meaning to do one at the beginning of August, but I figured since the July one was kind of like towards the end of July anyway, that I would just wait until the beginning of September, then I'd have a little bit more to talk about, and I have an eyelash or something that's like sticking to my other eyelash and it's being annoying. Anyway, yeah. So I also, I filmed an episode of this a couple weeks back to be like an end of August, beginning of September kind of thing, and then it sort of kind of like fell by the wayside because like this takes a little bit more editing effort than my other videos because I like to edit in things nicely and have like oh here's this thing and here's ta-da and so that's kind of like my thing with this i did that with episode two and i really liked how that turned out so i'm gonna continue doing that with this series but that episode kind of fell by the wayside so i was like you know what forget that i'll just do one at the beginning of september and just have that be the next one so here i am it's september 8th currently so we'll see when i get this uploaded because this is currently Sunday, and after this I'm going to have a lot of me being busy. So I'm going to try to edit this and get it out as soon as possible, but I've also got some new singles to react to, which will probably be out before you see this episode, so I don't know, we'll figure it out. Anyway, so the last, <clears throat> last episode ended off with me talking about Darko Starfire. Great album. But after that, I checked out... You know what, I'm just going to go in order of my uh the videos that i did not necessarily the patreon video order so i'm just going to go by the release of the other things and then when i get to the albums that i haven't made videos on yet or i haven't fully finished editing yet i'll just talk about them in patreon order it doesn't matter you don't care about the order to this let's get started alt Akila. this is their best song this is the best alt song it just is i love this song I haven't listened to it a ton because there's been other albums that I like. I'm, I'm an album person. I don't know if I've said this before or if you know this about me, but I like to listen to albums all the way through. When a single releases, I'll listen to it a couple times and then I'll usually, usually, there's an exception coming up, but I will usually <laughs> put off listening to it again until the actual album comes out. And then I'll listen to it in the context of the album, and I'll kind of take it in more. That's kind of where Aquila is for me. It's the best alt song, but I haven't gone back to it a bunch because I'm waiting to hear it in the context of the full album. And then I'll listen to it more from then on out. That's just a me thing. I don't know if it's like a weird OCD thing or what, but I've got OCD things with other things in my life, so it's probably just a byproduct of that, so whatever. Anyway, it's a great song. Perfect song. I still have to contact them and uh, talk to them about doing a piano cover because they wanted me to do a piano cover and I want to do a piano cover, but I don't have time to do a piano cover. I still don't have time to do my uh, 1K subs piano cover that I wanted to do. It's just been hectic. Past few months, past few weeks, but mainly like since the beginning of August, I guess, it's been very hectic. I've been preparing for student teaching, and now I'm student teaching, and it's been wild. But I'll get to it at some point. So, whatever. That song is great. The song's a masterpiece. 10 out of 10. Amazing. Uh, <clears throat> then I checked out Fit for an Autopsy. Hostage. It's, it's okay. Hostage is an okay song. I haven't heard their new single. Still gotta check that out. Hostage is an okay song. I just feel like it was missing something that Oh What the Future Holds had. That album is so good. It's their best album. And this song just didn't quite meet the standards that I was looking for. So I'll see how their, uh, their new song is. And I'll see how the new album is, which comes out pretty soon. I think it comes out in October, actually, if I remember correctly. But I'm looking forward to that either way, because Fit for an Autopsy, even when they're not quite as good as their peak, they're still really good. They're just one of those deathcore bands that are just super, super solid, no matter what. Uh, after that, oh, let's see, I finished the Elden Ring DLC. That was a lot of fun. Go check out that playthrough if you haven't. That was, that, that DLC is so good. 11 episodes, 
three to f five six hours each it's, there's there's a lot of content there if, if you are interested in that um <clears throat> then i checked out ocean wither resentment chain resentment chains finishing off the third track of the pillars of the anguish cycle ep this this is amazing it's really really good it's instrumental which isn't really my thing but oh my goodness excuse me I just ate dinner, so I'm like burping and stuff. Um, <laughs> for an instrumental thing, it's and like my eyes are edgy too. Like what the heck? For an instrumental thing, it's still really, really good. I mean, one of my favorite albums this year is an instrumental album. So, I guess it's the year of the instrumentals. You know, this EP is amazing. Please go listen to Ocean Witherer. It's a one-man project with like 100, 200 monthly listeners. It's so good. It is. I, I can't even put into words how good it is. I haven't gone back and listened to it as much as I've wanted to, and I don't know why, but the amount of times I've listened to it doesn't diminish the quality of it. It's still very, very good, and I highly recommend that you guys check this out. It's going to be on my album slash EPs of the year list for sure. This is going to be a tough year. There's been a ton of good music this year. I'm really going to have to struggle hard to figure out what the top ones are going to be what order i'm going to put them in and i currently i think i mentioned it oh maybe i mentioned it yeah i think i mentioned it in the last Corey cast but i am currently tied for album of the year between night versus and caligula's horse it's going to be very very close right now i'm kind of leaning more towards caligula's horse but also I haven't listened to Night Visions in a couple weeks, so I'll have to give that a few more listens. I'm just going to go back and forth listening to those two albums because it's really hard to pick which one I like more. But those are my two album of the year tied albums for album of the year right now. We'll see where that ends up at the end of the year. We got a few more months though, so we'll keep going. Go listen to Ocean Wither, by the way. Uh, then I listened to Octothorpe Man of Prey. This is really cool. This is a band from the vocalist of Mirar. And I, I like it. I think it's really solid. I think the songwriting leaves a little bit to be desired. I think it is a little bit bland, but I think the ideas and the concepts that are there are really promising. And I'm very much looking forward to the future of their band and how they grow from here. Very, very much looking forward to that. They're just getting started. So got a bright future ahead of them. Super, super duper looking forward to how that turns out. Then I listened to Fit for King, Technium. This single was kind of insane. I love it. I have not gone back and listened to it a bunch. This is one of those songs that I'm, I'm saving for the, in the context of the album to see how it fits and how it sounds like. Uh, I got two dislikes and four likes. Which, I mean, two dislikes isn't a lot, but I, when I when I get barely any dislikes, it's just funny when I see some dislikes and I'm like, oh, two dislikes and four likes. Oh, that, that's a 66.7 like to dislike ratio this was a bad video but it's like no whatever like my first skyrim playthrough episode one has 40 likes and two dislikes it's like oh my god two dislikes <laughs> but then i've got 40 likes also so it's kind of funny but anyway technium is really really good it's it's short but it's to the point and it's sweet and it, it feels it feels shorter but I think it really, really works, and I think it's a step in a very interesting direction for them. It's nothing mind-blowing in the genre as a whole, but I think for Fit for a King, who started to get a little bit stale with their past two albums, I think this is really, really solid. And I'm super duper looking forward to this album, because if this is anything to judge the album by, it's going to be a good album. Looking forward to that. All right, <clears throat> then I checked out black crown initiate violent portraits of a doomed escape this <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> i'm i'm still like hiccuping and, and burping and all that stuff this album um has grown on me so much it's kind of insane and marius will be glad to hear that i consider this a masterpiece now on first listen i think i gave it banger tier but I'm going to bump it up to Masterpiece. I have listened to this a few times since I first checked it out, and each time it's gotten better and better. The melodies are so good. I find myself, like a song starts, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is how it goes, and then I'm singing along to it, and it's like only the second or third time I've heard the album. It's kind of crazy how catchy this album is for like a, a, 
a melodic tech death album. It's wild, but the album is so good. It's very impressive. And I love it more and more each time I listen to it. In my video that I'm going to do for the albums that I've heard this year that haven't come out this year necessarily, this is going to be up there. This is going to be one of those ones that's high up there on that list that has blown me away. And it's another Marius request, unsurprisingly. So, make of that what you will. Anyway, <clears throat> then I had my, I just got my new setup and everything. That was beginning of August. Uh, I did, oh, uh, well. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about Haven, promise. This song is really good. The only thing is that, like, I heard it on stream, and a lot of the stream songs I don't quite remember as much. I put this on my playlist, though, and I listened to it a few more times. It's very, very good. The progression of, of this song is amazing. It's not metal. It's, like, pop, like, orchestral pop rock, I would say, more so. But it's really, really good. The soundscapes that they make, the production of it, the little like string parts that come in. It's very, very good. I think I like it a little bit less than I did on first listen. I was kind of glazing in stream a little bit. It's still, I think, the best song from that stream. But it's it's the only video I made from that stream. <clears throat> um, but it's, it's, a, it's a very, very good song. I don't have much to say other than that. And then I listened to... Vola, I don't know how we got here. This sort of, like, what's the word? Um, rekindled my love for Vola. I already loved Vola, but by this point, I had listened to Witness and Applause, and I had kind of worn those albums down, and I loved those albums, and those are amazing albums. They're, they're, they're so, 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 so good. I think Applause is their best album. Uh, Witness is still pretty darn good, but Applause is still on top, and I'm gonna talk about In Mazes soon, because I did hear that after this, but I don't know how we got here, I don't know what it is in this song, but there is some kind of crack in this song that makes it addictive. It is currently, I think, my number two most listened to song of all time. I'm gonna check on, uh, stats.fm, the little app for that. But I think that's correct. I had to sort of uh, like put my Spotify data in. I had to put in a request in Spotify and then wait for them to send me the zip file with all my data. And then I put that into <clears throat> into this app and now I can see everything. So I, oh, nope. Uh, it is currently my number one most listened to song of all time now in a month. <laughs> it's been a month. And it is my number one most listened to song of all time. There's some Mastad Nunavatan up there, obviously. Uh, 24 Light Years is up there. Ascension is in my sleep token. Some Julie Fowlis you can see is up there. And you, the majority is like Mastad Nunavatan. Uh, Aviation's Outliers, that's up there. Some Spirit Box, Madeline May. Caligula's Horse is up there. Some Relica. Takata by Mirar. So the past few like maybe I would say like the past year or year and a half I've been listening to music a lot more than I have just purely because the amount of time I've been driving has been a lot more so I've been doing a lot of driving between work and school and home and like like in school observations and now I'm student teaching and that's a 50 minute drive in the morning so I'm just listening to music more so I have more opportunities to crank through my Spotify library and a lot of these songs are now shooting their way up to the ranks of my top listened to songs of all time because I'm also finding that recently I'm listening to individual songs more. I used to be kind of a person who would just kind of listen to full albums all the way through and I still do, like I said, <clears throat> geez, oh gosh, excuse me, I still do. But I'm finding that I'm listening to singles a lot more. And this is the one exception of the single that I'm listening to a lot more. <laughs> I've got so many plays on this song. It's kind of insane. I don't know why I close the app without looking at how many plays <clears throat> I have on this song. But it's wild. This is, I think, maybe Vola's... Oh, dude. I don't want to... I... Okay. I don't think... Yeah. 60 streams. I've listened to this song 60 times. 24 Light Years I've heard 43 times. I think with those two songs those are their best two songs no contest but i think 
even though 24 light years i think is objectively a better song right now i like i don't know how we got here better just something about it is so addictive as a song and i like cannot stop listening to it it's kind of crazy it's amazing i haven't listened to it in like a week i kind of ran it into the ground and then i'm taking a break and i'm gonna wait for the album to come out and then i'll hear a lot more when does the album come out because i i um i think it comes out this month actually i got i need to i need to research this too um friend of a phantom i can't spell friend of a phantom this comes out september 15th bro it comes out oh my goodness it comes out next week no it doesn't wait release date november 1st no it doesn't why is it saying release date november 1st but then why does this say say uh, uh, september 15th what what fan camp only allows 90 days pre release date will be oh oh the release date will be updated until it shows november for okay until it's just okay so Bandcamp is lying never mind sorry that's kind of crazy yeah i'm gonna save this for the full album i'm gonna listen to it a lot more in the context of the album i have not heard paper wolf so that'll be fun to hear in the context of the album but we'll see this song is a masterpiece though then i checked out unprocessed sacrifice me this is unprocessed doing the thing that they do so 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 well uh manuel is is it is it Manuel? Is that is that his name? Yeah, Manuel Fernandez. Okay, uh, Manuel Gar Gardner Fernandez. I was correct. His vocals and his guitar playing is it's just so special. A lot of it kind of like I like I said when I listened to them for the first time, it kind of feels like Polyphia, but it feels like Polyphia in their final form. It feels like Polyphia perfected. Where Polyphia is more instrumental and they're more focused on the guitar playing. I think with Unprocessed, all of the elements of all of the instrumentals and the vocals all work so well to create such an interesting, cohesive sound that doesn't feel like it features one thing above the other. Obviously, the guitars and the vocals are the feature, but like the other instruments, the drums, the bass, like it's all so interesting. All of the chord progressions and everything, especially in this song, are so, 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 so good. I I want them to do more softer songs. And I know Manuel does, like, uh, like live recordings and stuff, and he, like, plays things on his YouTube channel, which I have to check out. But that kind of stuff, I, I want them to do more softer things, because I think that's cooler, in my opinion. Anyway, this song is great very very good then i checked out make them suffer oscillator on a re-listen i don't like it quite as much as i did the first time i was kind of glazing it it's still really really good it's still make them suffer they can't write a bad song but i think it is a little bit too much of their style their style is really good but i wanted a little bit more it felt kind of like doom switch 2 but with the first doom switch being better in the second so that's kind of what this felt like i don't like it quite as much i i think it's like a 7 out of 10 song now but it's still really really good i'm still really really looking forward to that album i think it's going to be a banger can't wait to hear it then i heard uh the opeth track paragraph one they are or they they just dropped a new single they dropped paragraph three i think is the new song i still have to listen to that at the time of recording this video but i'm looking forward to that this was interesting this is uh one of because it's like one of the first opeth songs i've heard i've only heard i think like four or three or four or five songs from them now because it's one of the the first few opeth songs i've heard i'm still not really sure how i feel about this band i still really really like it i think it's interesting it's different from pretty much everything i've heard it's very see i'm hiccuping now it's very unique it's very them it's very like they sort of do their own thing and i don't really know any bands that sound like them i'm sure there probably are but i can't think of any and i don't really listen to any bands that sound like them so very interested to hear my first full album from them which will be their new album and i'm looking forward to it can't wait uh, I think the album is called Last Will and Testament, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. 
Then after that, I checked out Void of Vision, Blood for Blood. This is my first time hearing Void for Vision at the request of Max. And I I really, really liked it. I think it's really fun. It's a, it's a good song. It's a good song. I don't think it's amazing, but I think it's a really good song. If I'm going to listen to a song that's bouncy and heavy and something like this, I will probably choose to listen to something by like Dealer or Darko or something like that over this song, but it's still a really good song. I would be super interested to check out more from Void of Vision, because again, this is just the very first song from them that I've heard. So I'd be interested to see what happens with the rest of their music and hear what that's kind of like. <clears throat> uh, then I heard Ocean's Eight Alaska Onstra. This, this song is okay. This song was, was um, all right. It was okay. I haven't listened to it since the first time I heard it. Again, it's just one of those songs that I'm kind of waiting for the full album. And I'm kind of brushing through a lot of these single reaction videos that I'm not going to talk too much about because I'm going to save them for the full album whenever they drop. This song was okay. It's very different from the Ocean State Alaska that I know. If you watch the video, you know that I heard Lost Isles and Hikari and then nothing since then. So I haven't heard... Uh, I don't I, I don't know. They, they've got other music, but I just haven't heard that other music <clears throat> since then. So I would be interested to hear what they kind of did in that period of time that I fell off of them a little bit. Then I heard Cane Hill Fade. Again, weird song. Haven't come back to it. It is what it is. Yeah, it's, it's an okay song. I thought it was okay. I'm just going to move on. I don't have much to say about Kane Hill. They've never been one of my favorites, but I also haven't heard a ton from them. So go watch that video if you want to see uh, more of my thoughts on that. Uh, then I heard Leprous Like a Sunken Ship. I'm going to skip that to talk about the full album as a whole, because I have some thoughts on that full album as a whole. So I'm going to save some for later. Uh, I listened to Monuments the MNUensis. This was a a full reaction that I did a while ago at the time when I put this video out, but I made the video like a lot later because it took me a while to actually get to it and edit it. <coughs> um, the amanuensis, it was, it was okay. I actually like it a little bit more than the first time I listened to it. I don't think I'm going to move it. I'm pretty sure I put it in goes hard tier. I don't think I'm going to move it up, but I think it is still a pretty solid album, and I like it a little bit more. It's less annoying on subsequent listens. It's kind of like what I wish Era was, where it's that sort of very tappy, riffy, kind of weird, interesting... I don't know. It's, it's weird and different, and it feels a little bit generic at points. But I think it's way more interesting than Era, something like Era self-titled especially. It's it's more interesting than that. And there's a little bit more going on, and it's a little bit more memorable than that too. So, it's still pretty solid. Uh, then I heard... I put out my video on Bill Murray American Motorsports. This album has grown on me a lot since the first listen. I can't remember what I gave it. I think I gave it banger tier. I'm going to keep it a banger tier. It doesn't quite put its way into masterpiece for me, but it is still a very, very good album. I don't think it's quite as good as Eggy Pocket, like I said in that video, but I think it might be Bill Murray's second best album. It's very, very good. Johnny's melodies and the country influences and the, the, the guest artists on this album, I think we're all great choices. There's not really much about this album that I dislike. I just think that it doesn't quite reach the heights of Eggy Pocket in terms of melody. And that's the biggest thing for me. I'm a, I'm a melody loving guy. Got to have great, great, great melodies for me to love it. And the melodies in here are really, really good, but they're not as good as Eggy Pocket. So go listen to that album if you want to actually hear what I consider to be the best of Bill Murray. It's still really good. Still banger tier. Then I listened to Relica Secrets of the Future. This is another album that has grown on me a lot. I don't think it punches its way into Masterpiece either, but it's like a high banger tier. It's very, very good. 
This album, the only thing about it, and I'm going to pull up the Spotify so I don't sound insane as I'm trying to think of these things. Secrets of the Future, <clears throat> I like the majority of it. Dying Light is a great song. Cave, Killstar, The Flower. Then we have, for some reason, Soraya and Terminal don't hit for me. I've listened to them a little bit since that. Whoa, wait, what? How is Terminal the, the most listened to song? I think that's the weakest song on the album. What in the world? Okay. Um, well, you know what they say. The band's, uh, like any band's most popular song is probably the worst. <laughs> but I thought Terminal was the weakest song on the album, and I, I skipped that. And sometimes, sometimes, Sor sometimes I'll listen to Soraya, but usually I'll skip that. Terminal, I'll skip. Keep Yourself Away, Crossfire, Physical, Two Steps Apart, A Spark, Upside Down. Amazing second half of the album, too. It's just those two tracks, really. It's Soraya and Terminal that I don't really like as much, and I kind of skip. Not sure why, I just find them a little bit boring. I think the synth in Terminal is uh, annoying on subsequent listens. You have that... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I, I don't like it on subsequent listens, and I skip it. So, yeah. Those two I skip. But the first four tracks and the last six tracks are all really, really good. This album is very good it's going to be on my top albums of the year list for sure so definitely look forward to that because that goes so hard great album high banger then we got to vola in mazes guys um i like this more than witness i don't think i like this more than applause but it's very close vola is such a weird band because their two best songs are 24 Light Years off of Witness. And uh, I don't know how we got here. But even though 24 Light Years is one of my favorite Vola tracks, the whole album of Witness as a whole, I think, is probably the weakest album. There's some stuff off of that that, <clears throat> that I skip. Like the second half of that album, I actually don't really like all that much. Um, I can't, bro, I can't spell Witness. Here we go. Straight Lines is great. Head Mounted Sideways, 24 Light Years, These Black Claws, I don't really like Freak, Napalm, Future Bird, Stone Leader Flying Down, or Inside Your Fur. I listen to the first four tracks, and then I turn it off and I go listen to something else. They're not bad songs. It's just if I'm listening to Vola, I'm going to listen to Vola songs that I really like, and not those last five tracks. I think that's the weakest part of Vola's entire discography, is the last half of Witness. But everything else off... Everything else... That they've done is great that i've heard everything off of applause is amazing sometimes i'll skip whaler i think whaler is the weakest track on applause and sometimes i'll skip it but the rest of that is so 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 good and uh in mazes is up there with the best in mazes i think as an album and this is gonna sound weird but as an album i think in mazes is possibly the best like flowing if that makes sense. I don't know. I just feel like like with with applause. I'll put it on, but I'll skip around. I'll be like, oh, I want to listen to a title track. I want to listen to this. I want to listen to... And I'll kind of skip around a little bit more with that, so it's weird. But with In Mazes, I'll start from track one, and I'll go to, all the way to the end. I will skip Stare Without Eyes and Feed the Creatures, though. I don't really like those tracks. Not the biggest fan of those two. The best song on that by far is Gutter Moon. In my reaction you saw i was like in tears during emily and gutter moon those songs are mind-blowing gutter moon especially i think gutter moon is their third best song so you've got um <clears throat> well objectively best 24 layers i don't know how we got here gutter moon amazing other than that my favorite songs on this album besides gutter moon and emily uh, Owls is great. Stray the Skies is amazing. The Same War is amazing. In Mazes is amazing. Starburn is amazing. Literally, I'm just naming every single song. Oh, yeah. Your Mind is a Hopeless Streamer. Sometimes I skip that, but sometimes I listen to it. That one I'm kind of, uh, kind of middle of the road on, and then I don't really like A Stare Without Eyes or Feed the Creatures, but every other song is great. In Mazes, I think, is, is a high banger. It's not a masterpiece like, uh, Applause is. But it's not as bad as Witness where I skip like the last ha whole half of the album. So still really, really good. <clears throat> okay, 
We're getting now to things that I have not put out yet. So I'm going to talk about some albums that are not out on YouTube. So if you see an album that's not there on YouTube and you actually know, I'm going to save this for after I talk about the other videos I put out. So let's, let's just move on to, um, shadow of intent flying the black flag. It's shadow of intent. What can I say? The only album of theirs I've heard is Reclaimer, so I'll have to check out the other ones. People have been giving me a lot of mixed signals with that. Some people say that Elegy isn't as good. Some people say that Melancholy is the best and Elegy, Elegy is still great. But I'm going to check out their other albums at some point. But this track was really good. Reminded me of Reclaimer. Super solid track. Again, not something I'm going to go back to until the full album comes out because I want to hear it in the context of the full album, but I still think it's super, super, super solid. Madeline May, The Bard. Dude, this EP is amazing. I call it a masterpiece when I first heard it. I, I still think it's even better than that. It is in the running for EP of the year for me. And it might take over uh, Poetic Edda. <laughs> we'll see. A little, a little medieval themed cottage core whimsical album taking on the the deathcore champions of poetic Edda. Like, who, who would have thought? Me, because I love Madeline May. But this EP is amazing. Every song is so good. I've listened to it like four or five or six times since that day I put the video out. Whoa, dude, that was that was five days ago. I put out that video. No way. No way, really? It feels like I've listened to that album so much since then. Or the EP. I mean, it's only like 20-something minutes, so it's really easy to get through. But I, I'll listen to it, like, twice on my on my commute to work, and then twice on my way back, and like, it's, it's just so good. It's something you can just throw on, and it's really easy listening. It's really fun to sing along to. I think her songwriting has improved, actually, since... Um, where is it? It's over there somewhere, but since to exist with you. However, as much as I love this, I do have one minor complaint that didn't really annoy me the first time I listened to it, but it started to annoy me a little bit on subsequent listens, and it's the vocal flow. There are some things here and there that, and I didn't notice this actually as much on my first listen, but there's some things here and there that bothered me just a little bit, especially in like side quest song. There's a couple things. I think SideQuest Song is the most egregious thing with some of the lyrical flows, like the accents beating on the wrong syllables, things like that. I think it it doesn't really bother me that much with this, though, because the overall vibe is really, really good. I think what bothers me most about lyrical flow being off is when the vibes are off, too, like Era. Like, if I'm listening to an Era album and it sucks, and then the lyrical flow is also sucking, it just adds to the suckage. But when you have an album that is musically this impressively masterful and the lyrical flow is like a little bit off, I'm like, oh, it doesn't bother me that much, but it's a little bit weird. I don't think it knocks it out of Masterpiece, but if anything, that's going to be the one thing that might make uh, hope, uh, that might make Poetic Edda win over this is that the lyrical flow in this is a little bit weird. But I'll have to see how I feel about it after a while. Uh, then, just today, I put out my video about Fathomage, Autumn's Dawn, Winter's Darkness. This album I did come back to very briefly. I don't think I... No, I didn't listen to the whole thing, but I started listening to it. And I I think it's it's still really good. It's a still, still a really good atmospheric album. I still am going to keep it in Goes Hard tier. Not going to move it up to Banger. I just this just isn't something that I'm going to come back to all the time. It's something that I'm going to listen to situationally when I'm gaming, when I'm looking for something to just have on kind of in the background. It's not something that I'm going to put on while I'm driving. It just, it, it's just not because when I'm driving, I'm looking for something I can sing along and I can jam along to. And with this, you, you really can't because it's black metal and it's just a little bit weird. And I'm not the biggest fan of that. But it has some really good atmosphere. So, yeah. Still think my opinion hasn't really changed on this. And that's kind of that's kind of where I'm where I'm sitting right now. 
Uh, and then this video isn't out yet at the time of recording, but I, I have it scheduled to go out tomorrow morning. Dealer, New Order of Mind. The highlights for that video is coming out tomorrow. This album is so good. <laughs> I still think it's a masterpiece. I, on subsequent listens though, there's some parts that fall a little bit flatter for me. I still love nearly everything about it, but there's some tracks that I think just aren't quite as good as some others. So it might actually be bumped out of Masterpiece, but I'm kind of in between Banger and Masterpiece right now. I don't know where I will land on this, but I'm considering bumping it down just because it's not quite as memorable on subsequent listens. But I don't know. It's still really, really good. It's still the best sort of like new metal hardcore like what would you call this i i don't know who cares about genres it doesn't matter bro music is music if you care about genres bro like shut up it doesn't matter if it's good it's good and this is good all right now i'm gonna get into the albums that i have not made uh made videos on and the first of that that i have to talk about and this may be uh an elephant in the room First thing is uh, Periphery for Hail Stan album analysis. I don't think I'll be making a highlights video for this purely because I think my reaction is boring. I think I did not do this justice. I think I came into this wanting to do an album analysis and I, I did for the most part, but I ended up more so just disappointing myself because I didn't like the album as much as I remembered, and I don't know if I should make that into a highlights video. So let me know if you want to see that, but it's out on my Patreon, but I don't want to put out something that is boring. Also because like the last half of that album, I didn't really analyze much, and I was just kind of talking about how it was more boring than I remember. But let me know. I might still do a highlights video. Let me know if you want to see that. If you don't care, then whatever. If nobody says anything, I, I just won't. Because it's not even like a new album reaction. I've already heard the album, so it's literally just me li listening to an album I've already listened to and being like, yeah, this isn't as good. Let me know what you think, but whatever. Uh, sorry to Zach, who requested that if he was looking... If you were, if you were looking for something more praiseworthy, more analytical, I'm sorry. Um, but I was just... I, I, I just don't... I don't like that album as much as I used to. It's kind of weird. Uh, okay, then the other two full albums that I haven't edited yet are, between, well, hang on, let me, let me check my Patreon just to be doubly sure that I'm not uh, forgetting anything that maybe was blocked. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 blah, 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 leprous. <laughs> Definitely leprous. I will talk about leprous. <clears throat> yes, anyway. Between the Bear and Me, Colors. Oh. I'm sorry, dude. I I don't like this album. I do not like it. If you watched my video, I'm very sorry, but I it's the second album ever that I put in absolute dog water, or actual actual dog water. There was very there was not much about this album that I liked, and the stuff that I liked was here and gone. Before I oops knocked my my armrest what do you, I forgot the name of that thing for a second the stuff that I did like was here the stuff that I liked was here and gone before I had enough chance to even register that I liked it and I hated it I hate that that kind of stuff I, I, I just don't like that kind of stuff and I really want to like this album because I've heard so much praise for it but I just don't, and I'm gonna listen to Colors too at some point, and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna listen to Colors again at some point, but I think I need to kind of distance myself from it now and sort of let the hate die down, because if I go back and listen to this album again, it's gonna be a slog trying to get myself to get through it, and I'm just gonna disappoint myself again. So I'm just gonna give myself some time to like forget about it for a little bit, and then come back later and see if my opinions have changed before the end of the year and then let you guys know where that stands. Uh, but I just, ugh, I just don't like it. It's just not for me at all. Way too chaotic. Not enough for me to like. I, it's, it's, it's annoying, frankly. It's annoying and I don't like it. I don't like it. No, thank you. Mm. 
Anyway, I'm just going to get angry if we keep talking about that. So, uh, Mir, Wheels Within Wheels. I think it was Tundra who put this in my Discord and was like, hey, you should listen to this. This is kind of like, um, what did he say? I think he said it was like Agent Fresco and something like that. And I, I can see where he gets that, but I feel like this, it was more orchestral than Agent Fresco. And it was a little bit more experimental in terms of the harmonic progression. Whereas Agent Fresco is more predictable, but it's experimental in terms of like the sound and just overall, just how good the songs are. And in something like this, with this Mirror album, I don't think it quite reaches those heights that Agent Fresco hits. And I'm just comparing it only because Tundra did, and I, I shouldn't because it's there's not much to compare it. But looking at it on its own, I think it's really interesting. And maybe I'll like it after a few more listens, but honestly, I haven't gone back to it. It's only been a week since I listened to it, so maybe I will like it more on subsequent listens. So this might have to be something that I'll talk about in a later episode of the podcast when I listen to it more. But on a first listen, I just think it was a little too all over the place for me, and I like more structure. That's just me. That's my musical opinion thing that I really hammer home all the time, is I love structure. I love good structure. You can still be really experimental and have really proggy stuff with structure. And this just didn't really hit for me, though. Sorry. Then we get to Leprous. Then we get to Leprous Melodies of Atonement. This album, I think I've listened to it twice since I put out the video. Or like I listened to it once all the way through and then once again I started trying to listen to it again. I I love it more. It really is starting to hit on a second, third, more playthroughs. It's really starting to hit more. And it's really growing on me. And I'm surprised because on first listen I was very mixed on it. I'm pretty sure I gave it uh, goes hard tier, I think. I'm going to bump this up to banger. It's really grown on me a lot, surprisingly. And I was not expecting that because I did not like Ophelion. And I've, I've tried listening to that album again, and I just don't like it. And this kind of does the same thing. But I think the main thing that works so well for Melodies of Atonement is each song has its own little motif thing whether it's like the like silently walking along with the wham 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 with like the wham whams or I, I i don't know anything like each song has a little motif that carries throughout the whole song and i think the repeated sections do a really good job of not always feeling like they're just repeating the same thing over and over again which it felt like in a i think in here it they do it better they repeat stuff, but they keep it interesting, and it doesn't get on my nerves as much as I thought it would on subsequent listens. I still think that it's a little bit boring at times. I think the songs are a little too similar in terms of structure, and when you have something like that where it's sort of the same kind of thing throughout the album, it's like, here's a motif, but then it starts off quiet, and it builds a little bit. Ooh, and then it gets quieter. Ooh, and then it builds a little bit more, and there's a big ending, but it's kind of the same as the beginning, but it's just a little bit more. And it's like, it's kind of that way through most of the album. And I don't like it quite as much as uh, something like Pitfalls, which is their best album out of the three now that I've heard all the way through. But this one is my this was my second favorite out of the three albums that I've heard from Leprous, Pitfalls of Felion, and and now this one. Um, I'm still very interested to hear their older side of their discography, pre Pitfalls era, because I haven't heard a lot of that actually. I have heard some songs here and there because I have family who love Leprous and like they listen to it a lot, so I've heard it in passing, but I've not really heard a lot of their older stuff. So that's something I'm going to have to check out. I might check out some of their older singles uh, on my next stream, which I think... Mm, actually, I don't know if I can do it next week because I, I won't have enough time in, in the day. Dude, my weekends are so, are so packed. And my weekdays are so packed. Everything is so packed. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to listen to some more of the Leprous. But as this stands, I'm bumping this up to Banger Tier. This has really grown on me a lot and I'm surprised. So, yeah. All right. 
those are my thoughts. That is everything that I've heard up to this point. Let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like me to clarify anything and I will try to answer. If you are watching this early on the episode, like the, because I, I released this a week early on Patreon, if you are one of the patrons who is seeing this a week early, I don't know who would even, like, is anybody even in that tier currently? Because uh, things are a little bit weird because I am just kind of like, you know, just kind of not putting stuff out. So we'll see. Uh, I think, actually, I think it might only be Zach, Goat Raptor, who will see this. So, Zach, if you're seeing this early... No, 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 sorry, Zach and Tundra, I guess, are both on there. And I'll send this to Max, too, because Max can't support me on Patreon, but he supports me on Twitch instead. So I still send him the stuff on Patreon for like the the five dollar tier and like all the album request stuff i still send him that because he can't because he's in russia so anyway you guys don't care but yeah those are my thoughts let me know if you want me to clarify anything if you have any questions any of that kind of stuff hope this is somewhat interesting sorry it was like a month and a half since the last episode but hey it's better than like four or five months which was the span between episode one and two could be worse. All right. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Love y'all. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>